Welcome back to the Mount Gill Missionary Baptist Church, number 8 Burning Drive, Conway, Arkansas, where Reverend C. Cooper is the pastor. As we continue through the year of 2023, we will continue our in-person services and our virtual services each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We pray that our services are inspirational and you will visit us soon. Clear your heart and mind as we worship Christ with the previously recorded service. Be blessed as we prepare for the worship experience on today.
open our hearts and minds. Let us confirm your loving spirit with us. Oh, we need you, Lord. We can't make it in this life without you. Oh, Lord, we need you in our lives. We need you in our homes. We need you in our schools. We need you on our jobs. Lord, we need you by and by. Oh, thank you right now, oh Lord. Oh, and from my heart, we ask that you would hear our petition this morning. We come with the humility of our lives, knowing that we are so weak, but yet you are so strong. We recognize the humanness of who we are. We recognize, oh Lord, the the difference between godly wisdom versus worldly wisdom. Oh, the preciousness of being able to know the difference between the two. Oh, thank you right now, Lord. We ask that you bless Mount Gale. Bless each and every member of this church. Lord, we know that we're not all that we need to be and that we want to be. But we ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us and guide us. Lead our lives. Help us to become better Christians. Lord, we ask right now, Lord, and we thank you that you would bless our pastor today. Touch the man that will bring the the bread of life to us. Give him the inside knowledge of what you desire for him to speak to your people. Yes, Lord, speak to us today, oh Lord. We need you. We need a word from you. Lord, we ask that you would bless our children. They need you. Open their hearts. Open the parents' hearts. Teach the parents that they may be able to teach their kids. Oh, Lord. Oh, help us now, Lord. We are so thankful for you today. We ask that you bless the sick and the shedding. Those that are in need of you. There's some things only you can do for us. Only you can provide for us. That only you can do. And we recognize that today, Lord. We are so thankful today for the many blessings you've given us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
what's going on in your house. I need them to show up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Then you get to your house first, it's all right with me. Because at least I know we in the neighborhood. Yeah. And soon or later, we're going to get to your knees. Yeah. The reason I can wave my hand, not because of now, but because he done it in the past. Always sing it there. Let's get here, bro. You at church now, you might as well have church. You here. Thank you, Lord. 
music ministry. Yeah. Everyone, it's just good to hear it. Yeah. If you would, just say, hey, she could get hooked yourself at the time. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Pass it up all of it. God bless you. Amen. God loves you. Amen. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, mm. verse 8. If you've been in church long enough, you've been by this. Well, many yeah. times. If it was good then, it's good again. Book of Daniel, mm. chapter 1, verse 8. Amen. Amen. There in verse 8, and it reads, But then, that's what we'll preach for. <laughs> but then, right? You all are wise, intelligent people. I know you know well how to read the whole context. I just want to talk about Reverend Gilmore. But then, it's Black History. And we're looking at the journey, the trail, the tears, the tragedies, and the triumphs. We'll look at it from a biblical perspective. We understand and comprehend where we come from, where we are, and where we're going. As we face the challenges of living godly in a corner of every world, where culture has become common, I want to encourage you to view and to value the opportunity to make a difference in your area of life. Strive beyond the atmospheric pressure to know and to live a life purpose. The first step for achieving purpose and maximizing your life is to hold a solid perception of your uniqueness and to embrace your individuality. It does not matter who you are, where you come from, you all have a designer's original fingerprint. No one has your fingerprint but you. God designed it that way to allow you to recognize the fact that you have purpose. And no one can complete and fulfill your purpose but you. When we look at Daniel, we fall off into chapter 1 when the children of Israel uh -huh. in Judah have been captive and taken into Babylonian captivity. Right. God has a way of allowing the enemy to prove his son. Sometimes he lets the enemy go get you and bring you back to home. Somebody gonna catch you. Sometimes he will let life beat you, battle you, and break you. And then you'll bring your wound itself to him. So sometimes he'll let sickness sell you. Yes, sir. Sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll let a boss fire you. So you can do what he said. Start your own. Can I get a witness? I'm talking to somebody here. God has a way of allowing the enemy to help prove his son. All the time, God is iron the bits, like to capture you, control you, and confine you in order for his people to return back to him. Oh, Lord. They captured a certain group of people. Jew. Y'all know what you mean. Uh -huh. They captured the folk just their whole assignment is just open their mouth. And pray. And pray. Judah means praise. You can't do that sin with the hand. Oh. You can't do that in quiet meditation. Praise means a vocal, open your mouth, lift up your hand, drop your knees, bow before him. And it should, you shouldn't be bothered by other folk because they don't praise him like you pray. Everybody got their own way. Some of us praise and just cry. 
will sing the right song and pick on me and not let my mind go back to what I could have been. I break down in tears thanking God that he kept me through it all. So, so no matter what I'm preaching about, I don't care whenever you feel it, you let a praise go out. Now don't you wait on the, on the end. You get yours in now. Yeah. Judah is captured. And after being captured, they start sifting through the people. Sifting and selecting certain people. Y'all know what that means. Y'all know what that means. Know you got to play ball. You got to pick your team. Anybody want to get picked? Put me in coach. They started sifting. Watch this. They removed them from the homeland. Took them into captivity. Sifted through their people. And selected the intelligence, the skill, those with high level of intellect that would comprehend it. They removed them and left a remnant of people that they thought couldn't fight for this. Come here, this ain't even a sermon, y'all. Come here, when you can't fight for yourself, God will fight for you. Don't you ever think you're alone, God will fight. Old folks, he'll fight you back. Yeah. First point is first point. Verse number three: arrested captain. Uh-huh. Do you feel like you've been arrested? Uh-huh. Feel like life has you in a straight jacket. Uh-huh. Feel like you can't turn left and you can't turn right. Uh-huh. Do you ever feel like you, you, the more you do, the less you get uh, recognized for what you do? Uh-huh. Do you ever feel like the more you vote, the more you try to pay your taxes? It seems like I got hot all over again. Uh-huh. I got to pay the taxes, but Lord, I got hot. But see, like, life has you confined. And they don't know one of your baby bills. Y'all be quiet, you, you, you ain't got no bills in Life. Life is confined. I'm laughing. I like to call it out laughing, baby. Now, you know how they used to take eggs and throw eggs? Hey, somebody, anybody wasting eggs? Hey, you, you remember, let me catch some of us down and have children of our children grown. You remember when you were growing up, and you wouldn't worry about the water running and the lights on and all that stuff? But, but now that you got to pay your own bill, put them lights on. Stop running that water. Of the family. Not only, part of my head with it, not only did they catch them, arrest them, but then they tried to change their name. They arrested the captivity, the attachment of pagan names. Daniel's name, they changed into Belshazzar. Uh-huh. Hananiah's name, they changed him to Shadrach. Uh-huh. Mishael, they changed him to Mishael. All right. As a riot, they changed him to a baby. Uh-huh. I mean, come here, this is your note for today. Everybody write it down. You can change my name, but you can't change my name. Uh-huh. Is the name changed in the attempt to erase the homeland foundation of teaching? Is this a whitewashing of sort? What is so, so important about my name? If you take someone from their homeland away from familiar territory, this brings limitations. Ah. The attempt to change their name, attach new name, the attempt then is to assimilate the children of Judah into Babylonian culture. Ah. I don't, okay, don't lose me. Ah. I'm not talking about just then. I'm talking about right now. Yeah. We see the whitewashing of history right now. We see them trying to assimilate up. And you got to know the difference between education versus indoctrination. Education means they they educate from what has transpired, what they have learned. Indoctrination is when they take you and put you in a box, and they only want you to know what they want to know. Somebody with me? You can't miss this and just shout. You got to make sure that you comprehend what's going on in the text. This was an attempt to assimilate.
relate to children. All I ask you is your intentions paid. With the integrity, with the assimilation, with impure intentions, allow us to be uh, equal. Y'all with me? When the Babylon attempts to brainwash and reprogram the children of Judah, influence and infect their entity, often when we glance and scheme over the names, we don't make a big deal of it. We fail to comprehend the significance of names. We even promote and perpetuate that which oppresses, ostracizes, and negatively impacts our people. Name the cause. Venus, it's a name. We ride and we walk into the name. Forward, it's a name. We ride and we walk into the name. Gucci, it's a name. Y'all looking good, but he walked into the name. And then a lot of these folks have invented things or created or designed things that they really didn't design for you. But then you decided that you wanted to look good. So now they study you and your community and they know what you buy. Trinkets and golds and jewels and things that go blue. We all if you go home today, go home and just walk over there to your refrigerator and turn around and look at that. Walk in your closet and put out some more names that could be. Look at them red bottom shoes. You can't say they may say, oh, You bail on phones, for phone service by bail, all these other people, but the, the original folk is bail. They all subcontracts to the name. Y'all with me? While we are looking good, smelling good, driving good, and experiencing the best of life, they still got a name. When we we have promoted and empowered a name, we have finance and, and infrastructure with a name. Then when we get mad about the folk that wear the name, we march, we sing, we pray, we protest. They don't feel no remorse. They don't fear. They have no shame, but they do count. Y'all miss what I see. They don't care how much you march. They don't care how much you sing and or pray. But they do count how much you speak. Somebody gonna get that on their hand. They count. You don't believe they count how much you spend. Just look at what happened when you stopped riding and busting out of bounds. Montgomery bus car, bus bar car. When they stop riding the bus and they stop having passes on the bus, stop making money, then all of a sudden stuff changes. You want some stuff to change, stop spending your money for folks that don't like you. Regulate where your money is being spent. We don't have, we are not poor people, we just have poor spending. Everybody, listen to this statement. You cannot win if you keep feeding and financing what you are fighting. If you continue to give energy and resources to the system that is sifting the life from a people, you actually feed the enemy. Are we listening? Stop fussing and feuding. Just don't Yes. Where are your clothes in the room? We grew up in a time when you wore your clothes till you wore them. Now you buy, to buy shoes this month and next Monday I'm stop. We make that big time holiday. Regulate your life. Come on. Christian stewardship, before it begins in your pocket, it begins with your mind. And with your heart, you steward from your mind. You steward from your heart. You are steward of your money. Stop wasting your money and then complaining about wasting. You 
cannot be a conqueror if you don't confront the enemy. I'm not telling you to go out and fight, that is not what I'm saying. If you stand firm for life principles, life values, love everybody, treat everybody right, take a stand on something that's wrong, stand up and speak up. Help me, Daniel, help me. But, dang. They're providing for you at the king's table. Y'all see that? Yeah. Verse number five, the king appointed them daily provision from the king's meat. Yeah. In other words, you eat good. Yeah. You eat caviar, uh -huh. prime rib. Uh -huh. I, went, I went one day in, we went to a gathering on Petty King Mountain. There's a restaurant up there, I don't know what name. They served us a prime steak, a prime meal, that didn't need anything but a fart and your teeth. Yeah. It was so, it was like eating from the king's table. Yeah. It was so good. Come on, I'm trying to say that say something. Anything would make it taste good to you. Yeah. Because they want you to come back. Yeah. Yeah. It's right in the text. That they were, had been provided at the king's table, not only good meat, wine was different. Uh -huh. For three years, uh -huh. that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Uh -huh. Now, those folks that they were feeding <laughs> in that group was the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Unto whom the prince and unit gave name. Oh, I'll change in my name. Oh, Come here. Oh. Bit of history, bit of history. Y'all remember when uh, we did the roots and Kuchi Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kept trying to come make him call himself. Yeah, all right. Kobe. Yeah. Y'all yeah. remember that? Yeah. If you take a person of any culture, any race, out of their territory and put them in new territory, and try to assimilate them into that territory uh -huh. and then try to erase them from their original territory. Uh -huh. Then you put them at limited odds because they cannot function properly in a strange land. Uh -huh. Maybe y'all want to say it's like taking back the old school church. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger uh -huh. traveling through this very land. Uh -huh. They took them. They all like, let me move on, let me move on. And not only did they rename them, but they tried to re-educate them. Uh, I told them they're not Chinese. Okay? Is this what someone, this uh, traveling on voice to a distant land, separate from tribe, then forced into a culture with limited access, limited conversation, limited comprehension. What about the culture of Judah? What about my homeland tradition? Manners and the ways of my people. We're the only folk trying to get away from what brought us. The Dutch still know their history. The Jewish still know their history. All of the different nationalities know their history. And we, what little bit we have, we are trying to erase. I need to know what mama had going on. Even they talk to you about that even in the mountain field. First thing they're going to do, they're going to give you a long piece of paper, front and back, maybe two sheets, and they want to know about your mom and her side of the family, your daddy and his side of the family, did they have heart problems, did they have uh, blood pressure problems, did they have, because they want to know your history. In language, in language that we speak that is not of the native land is influenced by the, the oppressive culture. Uh -huh. One cannot blame a people for incorrect dialect and bad pronunciation of the language presented with that. Uh -huh. This problem is intentional and deserves investigation. Uh -huh. Did you all hear what I just said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot bring me 
here or my ancestors here from another country and deny us education for the first 300 years. And then when we finally get education, we don't speak the language like you speak the language. And now you want to suggest that we are listening. I beg to differ. Because if we made it through all of that with less, y'all don't know what I'm To arrive at Daniel's proclamation, verse number eight, we must take a closer look, analyze the approach. They acknowledge the gifts, verse four and five. The sins of the people to identify the weak versus the strong. Some have talent, some have gifts. <clears throat> then they separate them for a period of teaching and training for pay and things. Let me say a word here. Get all the education you can. Advance and everything. All right. The number one education I like to think of is the ministry of observation. You can learn much by just looking. You don't have to speak all the time. Just look. You, you, you don't have to say, if you just watch analytically the things that go on in your home, in your neighborhood, in your business world, you can learn. God will allow you to learn some stuff. And then, Find some folk that you can get around and just sit and talk. I like, I like talking to seasoned men. I like talking to seasoned men. I, I pick on him because he's a deacon Joe and we're here about him. And he don't know how much I appreciate the Lord that we talk. Sometimes we talk about politics. Sometimes we talk to Sometimes we talk about vehicles. I got to have some followers of my vehicles and gave them a history lesson on uh, Ford Motor Vehicles. I thought I wouldn't listen to <laughs> if, if, if you can learn that much just a few moments a week or a few moments in your life, sometimes you call Deacon Doors and we'll laugh about stuff. And other times I learn that you ought to have some men in your life and some women in your life that you either gain from or imparted in. Yeah. Walk around here like you don't want to know something. Lord, yep, you don't want no weed. Now, there's something that I didn't put in here, and I'm going to give it to you. For you to be able to make the statement, but Daniel, you must have a foundation prior to your captivity. The only reason Daniel could say what Daniel said is because Daniel had something put in him before he got home. Are you listening? If, watch this. If you put some stuff in your children, some principle, some life value, some Christian value, some self-worth, when that child gets out among anybody else, he knows exactly who he is. He's well aware of who he is. I know some children. I ain't calling them that. They get in trouble. It's because they decide to because they stumbled on it and nobody will tell them. They, because they have some values put in them. Yeah. Not, not just my children, some of these around the church. I look at them, I'm so proud of them because they have some values. Because their parents labored in front of them, prayed for them, put some in them. And when you're doing it like that, you make God have to keep it. Father, right. don't keep it in word. He said, train them while they're young. When they're old, they will not depart. So if you put it in them, you put it in the them, put it on the table, yeah. put it in the ear. Do you feed the enemy due to falsehoods or due to fear or due to disciplinary faith? That's really the problem. If most of us are good people, we just have a discipline problem. I'm going to say it, I'm going to look at the camera. I'm looking at the camera. I'm looking at the camera. All of us know what it is, but I got this problem with ice cream at 8 30 p.m. I'm just looking at the camera, y'all. I ain't nobody to talk about it. So, so all, the only way I'm not going to eat ice cream at 8 30 at night is it ain't no 
on ice cream tonight. <laughs> oh, you don't want to go home and ask that question about the car loans? It's because I have a discipline problem. <laughs> so, so, since I have a discipline problem, the best way for me to lose weight is say this to me, don't buy no more ice cream. If you know you can't handle a certain situation, stay with me. If what catches your eye on Fourth and Broadway, you need to go down Chester Street. But whatever it is, if it's something that you, if you know you're weak for a good sale, don't go to the mouth. He had to go to school 
and go to class with folk that were teaching him principles and values that were different from what he was taught at home. Yeah. Say this, I'm in school today. In my class the other day, the gentleman was teaching a particular class and got to a particular point. And, and, and was, was 30, I'm 62, and he's 57. So I'm older than him. And I could almost grasp in his mind as he was getting to a certain point to teach that he knew that I knew the real story. Y'all with me? He's teaching from the book. It's a history class. He's teaching from the book, so he had to take another lane. Because he could, now, number one, see, y'all know you pass. You know you pass. I'm, I'm trying my best. I want a good grade. I want a good grade, y'all. I can't expect excellence from you all, and I'm struggling. Amen? I got to do the best I can. I got to do the best I can. But I don't have. Probably have to say I don't have to worry about letting him get by with that stuff. Without saying something, I'm not gonna tell him his class. I'm not gonna be. Okay, okay. But there's some young folk of all races sitting in the class. Right. Don't stand here teaching me something that you know not true and expect me not. Right. <laughs> Professor, can I ask you a question? Have y'all with me? When you are in a pagan educated society, you must teach your children at home. Don't let them spend all their time in front of Game Boy, PS5, all I don't know what. Spend some time with a teacher. Yeah. Mm. He, he first of all, he, he, he had to go to a pagan education. He could disregard things that he knew were not true. Secondly, he had to be called by a pagan name. He knew the name, that a name alone could not define who he really was. He understood that you can change my name, but you cannot change my nature. You can call me whatever you want, but I don't have to answer you. Daniel had the word and all and the fortitude and, and the concrete character to know when to say to He said, you can teach me what you want. You can call me what you want, but I'm not eating that stuff. All that stuff I just read to you were the first seven verses of chapter one. But then, everybody else is doing it. But then, well, I might get a promotion if I kind of modify my character for a minute. But then, but well, 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 maybe I'll be a part of the end crowd. Right. But then, but maybe, maybe if I don't say anything, then it'll kind of wash under the rug. But then, maybe they can get away with it if I don't turn it in. Right. But then, and how many but then do I have to hear right. that are willing to let your character stand out right. to the point that you know when to say no? Right. Right. Daniel says, and I had a problem with it when I first saw it. What's wrong with Eve? That's prime real over there, man. What's wrong with Eve? That's the best of the best. That's what he eats. But man shall not leave by bread, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It's not what comes out of what goes in. Amen. Now, it wasn't the, the physical portion that was concerned about. Daniel understood that the food had been prayed over and offered to either God. And it's hard, thank you, Holy Ghost, it's hard for you to say no to the king when the king didn't eat. If you look in 1 Kings chapter 17, chapter 18, you'll find that Elijah had to go and stand before some people. And he had to go and stand before the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Grove. And the problem with the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the Grove is that they were nourished at the king's table. So they had to preach what the king said preach. 
the, the prophets, they were fed by the king. They were provided for by the king. Yeah. And when the king is feeding you, yeah. providing for you, giving you clothing, giving you all of your necessities, uh -huh. then you're probably not going to want to say anything negatively against the king. Oh so Daniel said, I tell you what to do. I won't insult you, but just let me give you a 10-day trial period. Let me and my brothers, my folks, my three brothers over here. I didn't want to say that in front of you. Daniel is not by his sin. But he's just a spokesman for the king. Daniel is not by himself. He's just a spokesman for him, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, if you give me five or ten days and let me eat just the green of the grain, just the pus of the earth. Most of us couldn't do it for two days, let alone ten. Can you get witness? He said, you don't give me meat, just give me the pulse of the ground. Verse number, number eight says, but Daniel purposed in his heart. Yeah. That purpose said, Daniel said in his mind. Mm. Daniel made up in his heart. Yeah. Daniel decided in his spirit. Yeah. Daniel determined in his country. Yeah. That, Daniel had a, resi a resolve in his mind. Yeah. Good news translation said, Daniel made up his mind. Yeah. Good word Complete Jewish translation said God, but Daniel resolved. Common English book said Daniel decided. In other words, Daniel said there are some things that are non-negotiable. There are some things that I just can't change my way. There's some things that I just cannot do. Can I get a witness? Every now and then, if you're going to make a difference in the world, you ought to have some points and places and periods in your life where you have to stand all the power that be, that there are some things that I cannot do because there's a father of the love. He's looking down, here below. Can I get a witness? It don't matter what other folk are doing. It don't matter what the other men are doing. It don't matter what the other priests are doing. It don't matter what the government says. Your parent and free. Yeah. 
but your first assignment will be that parent. Yeah. Amen? I'm not trying to do what Johnny's little, little Johnny spoke to over there. I don't care. That's the Johnny house. Amen? Yeah. I know you told your children on many times, I'm not their parent and they love my child. Wow. But in this house, There to be different. Yeah. There to be different. Yeah. I, I believe the church can make a difference. Yeah. If we become different. Yeah. Stop trying to look like other folks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. With, with a kind, cordial, yet concrete character. Yeah. To the point uh -huh. that you are not moved by how we feel when you know that you have represented God to the best of your ability, stand your Come here. The reason I want to use Daniel for example is because Daniel takes a stand now. Throughout the book of Daniel, you'll see what that stand will cost you, will elevate you, because he took a stand. Do you want are you willing to pay the cost to get out of there? Most of us want to go up, but we don't want to pay that much. Amen. Amen. That, that Daniel is a representative of those four boys, but we are the representatives of the king. When you go places, when you go to church, when you uh, go to school, when you go to business, when you go out to dinner, when you go out to eat, when you go on vacation, the world sees Christ through your coming. The world sees Christ through how we are. Our sisters and brothers, it doesn't matter what culture they are. God am not looking at our skin, he's looking at our spirits. They either worship him, he's worship him with spirit and truth. So, remember the life and the rest of it. Life will give you some attacks and names they really don't belong to you. Life can even acknowledge your gifts. People know that you're here. That's why they call you. Can we get away? But there comes a time when after being arrested, after they've acknowledged you here, you need to know how to get the right answer. And that answer is no. And he didn't do it disrespectfully. He knew your research. He did. That's a way to reject and disagree. Yes. Yes. You don't have to fall out. There's old folks. You don't have to kick up dust. Right. Yes. You, you, you don't have to lose, lay your religion down. If you got one, you can lay down. Lay it down. Yes. Don't get your one. Just stick with it. But know how to say no. Yes. That's when God starts doing stuff in our life. We stand for Him. Yes. We have the life of glory. Yes. Money, money, change, strength. We still live God. Amen. Some of us want to go back to the old ways. But God did it. Yes. Can I get it? Yes. He brought you to. Give him our honor and say, what would have happened had they not stood? And God told me, don't worry about the abstract that we don't know. Faith comes by hearing. I hear by the words. And the word right here says that Daniel made a decision that would impact the children for the next 60 you don't have to make some decisions that will impact the rest of your life. If you hear. I want to do this a little different. I want everybody to stand. Before you come to the altar, I want to ask a question. I, I want to make sure that we're not playing the church. I, I don't want to preach every Sunday and Reverend Gilmore preaching, Reverend Moore preaching, and Sunday school class. 
grassroots, then you miss God. You need to be saved. It does not mean that life will always be easy. It doesn't mean you're going to get everything you ask. But it means that you have a God that will walk with you from now on into eternity. It means that you have a God in your present everyday life to help you get through whatever you're going through. Because first of all, He keeps you. He keeps you out of hell. I say, that, that's the first one. I want to be saved from heaven. Amen. But secondly, he makes you, um, he positions you to have the best of this life. Even when you struggle that you can. So I want to ask a question. I want everybody to make sure that you are saved. Yes. Have you accepted Christ oh. in your heart as your Lord is saved? If you want to be saved, will you come this way? If you want to accept the message of sin, come this way. I get everybody's name. Right now, we want those that want to be saved. Come this way.
thank you for every hand, every heart, every person that gives, every person that serves, every person that prays, studies. We thank you that you are going to meet every need. You're going to supply every need. Every need. You're going to meet. Somebody going to call before the week is out and say, Pastor God, tell me. Thank you for what we are. Thank you, Mark, for what you're getting ready to take. And I like you're going to get promotion. 